Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Reynolds with Bored, Better Off Reading Every Day. Today I have Corduroy Takes a Bow by Viola Davis and it is based on the story from Don Freeman. It was just starting to snow when Lisa and her mother got off the bus in front of the theater. Lisa held corduroy tight as they walked up the steps. She had never been to a big theater like this before. Neither had corduroy. They had come to see a performance of Mother Goose Rhymes. In the lobby, people were picking up tickets. Ushers handed out programs. A brass chandelier hung from the ceiling that was painted with clouds. Suddenly, the lights flickered on and off. That means the play will start in a few minutes. We should find our seats, said Lisa's mother. Lisa held her mother's hand a little tighter and held corduroy even closer. The usher took their tickets and showed them where to sit. The seats are so soft, said Lisa. She put corduroy on her lap and looked through the program. Right before the play started, a very tall man sat down in front of Lisa. Mommy, Lisa whispered to her mother, I can't see. Here, dear, said her mother, we can fold our coats together and you can sit on top of them. When Lisa stood up to sit on the coats, the orchestra started to play. She forgot all about corduroy. He slipped off her lap and fell underneath the seats in front of them. Now I can't see anything, said Corduroy. Maybe if I go closer to the music, I could see the stage. He peeked down the aisle and saw some stairs. When Corduroy got to the top of the step, the big red curtain went up and up and up. Corduroy was so startled that he lost his balance and stumbled into the orchestra pit. He looked around at all the musicians and thought, this is a good spot to hear the music, but now I can't see the stage at all. At the back of the orchestra, there was a tall set of drums. Maybe if I sit, sit up, sat up there, I would have a better view, he thought. Quietly, he crawled through the orchestra past feet between instrument cases and around the music stands towards the drums. How did you get up here, little fellow? The drummer whispered to Corduroy. You must be a prop for, from the play. Someone will be looking for you. He put Corduroy up on the ledge behind the drums. There was a chair off to one side behind the curtain. I could see better from there, thought Corduroy. But before he got to the chair, a stagehand tripped on him. Sorry, Bear, said the stagehand. He put Corduroy on the table with the other props. The table was hard, not like Lisa's soft seat in the theater. Backstage was very busy. Actors were coming and going, changing costumes, getting their props. One actor almost grabbed Corduroy. I should find a safer spot, he decided. And he hid between the costumes. This is safe, he thought, but I'll never see anything from here. There was a tree with a basket in it. Its branches in the wind off one side of the stage it would be able, I would be able to see from there, Corduroy thought. He climbed up the tree and into the basket. Well, thought Corduroy, this is more like it. Not too high, not too low, this is just right. 
He settled in and watched the Mother Goose performance. I love the theater, said Corduroy. After a number of different scenes, the stage manager called out, Final scene, everyone. Take your places. Stage hands quickly moved new scenery onto the stage while the actors went to stand in position. Suddenly, Corduroy's tree began moving right onto the stage. Then it started to grow up, up, up where the tree, the basket, and Corduroy went. This is a very tall tree, said Corduroy, as he looked down at the stage far below. The tall tree made him think of the tall man who sat in front of Lisa. Corduroy wondered, how will I get back to the Lisa if I'm up in this tree? On the stage below, Mother Goose started to sing. rock a -bye, baby on the treetop, when the wind blows the cradle will rock. Off the stage, a fan blew air into the branches of the tree. The cradle began to rock back and forth, up and down, back and forth, up and down. Corduroy was getting dizzy. He held on to the sides of the cradle as it rocked faster and faster. Mother Goose kept singing, when the bow breaks, the cradle will fall, and crack the bow breaks, cradle and all. Down, down, down came Corduroy, cradle and all. Before Corduroy knew what was happening, Mother Goose scooped him up for the curtain call. The audience clapped as the actors bowed. Corduroy bowed too. After the curtain call, the cast took Corduroy backstage to the dressing room. Who does this bear belong to, they wondered. The usher brought Lisa backstage. Corduroy, there you are, said Lisa. How did you get on stage? I couldn't see. I wanted to get a little closer, closer, said Corduroy. Oh, Corduroy, said Lisa, you certainly got close. The very next day, Lisa made a theater just for Corduroy. He could see everything from a nice, safe spot. The end of Corduroy Takes a Bow. Boys and girls, I hope you like the story. I chose this story, of course, because it's Corduroy, but also because going to the theater is something that is very, very fun to do. And eventually, if you haven't done it already, you will once we're able to be out and about. And reading stories takes you to many places. In the first Corduroy story, we saw where uh, Lisa met him at the department store on the shelf. In the second, it was where she took him to the laundromat and he met the artist and got lost. And now we, here we are at the theater. So if you want to go many places without ever leaving your house, you know what to do. Bored, better off reading every day. It's Miss Reynolds and it was my pleasure to go to the theater with you and Corduroy. Bye.